and welcome to this week's edition of African Perspective. I'm Tipi Sumakutla. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, this week, we take a look at the role that the youth plays in politics. But first, let's start off with this. In the Sudan, the country's deposed president, Hassan Omar al-Bashir, was moved to Kobar prison in the capital Khartoum late on Tuesday. According to a family source, Bashir is being held under tight security in solitary confinement. Since his removal by the military last Thursday, Bashir had been detained under heavy guard in the presidential residence inside the compound that also houses the defense ministry. The military ousted Bashir after weeks of protests against him that culminated in a sit-in outside the defense ministry compound that began on April the 6th. <laughs> protests are going on despite his removal. Civilians are now demanding the military hand power to the people. Abdel Fattah al-Buhan now has the military council in charge of the country. And that council has promised to hold elections within two years. Uganda's foreign affairs minister says Uganda will consider offering asylum to Bashir despite his indictment by the International Criminal Court. Meanwhile, the African Union has given Sudan's army 15 days to relinquish power or face suspension from 55 member state organizations. In Libya, fighting has escalated, prompting the AU to call an urgent meeting in Cairo next week. The current chair of the AU has called a meeting for the 23rd of this month to discuss uh, with the Troika. The Troika is the current chair of the AU, the previous chair of the AU and the incoming chair of the AU. We are the incoming chair of the AU and therefore will be part of the Troika discussing a way forward for the issue of Libya. So we'll call on my panel to come and assist in this matter. Uh, and uh, we've also um, uh, in, uh, invited uh, President Sasungwesu, who is also heading the issue of, uh, of Libya for the, for the AU. So we're seized with the matter on the African continent to see how we can solve that matter. And former Foreign Affairs Deputy Minister Aziz Pahad says Western powers must take collective responsibility for what transpired in Libya. Gaddafi, the deposed leader of Libya, was captured and killed on the 20th of October 2011 during the Battle of Sirte. The wrongness of the British decision to, to sponsor, unfortunately, abuse of the UN Security Council, what was the regime change? And the consequences of a failed state are there for all of us to see now. Uh, president Obama, unlike any other president, while he was still in office, gave an interview to the Atlantic magazine. And I've never heard an American president say this. And he says he thinks he made a mistake because of the influence on Europe on taking the decision of regime change in Libya. Well, they can now apologize and all that. We live with the problems. We have a failed state which has become a base, not only for migrants into Europe and that, which is one of their concerns they have. Weapons, uh, it's become a base for terrorism. Much of the Sahel has been destabilized. Former South Africa's ambassador to the United States and retired diplomat Walid Ntlapu says these challenges in Sudan and Libya needs urgent attention. The ultimatum that has been given to the Sudan by 30th April to have changed and allow for a civilian government to take over is not going to be easy. Because I think we have to accept that Sudan has always been run by the military. Uh, the shuffle of the pack has got its own other reasons. Uh, and the pressures that the people have put on the military. And this has been seen in many other instances. Once they cave in, they sacrifice some of their own. But I think the Sudanese people have been very vigilant to say that one too. Because they know the kind of change that they want. As to whether they are ready to put in place a civilian government is something that has to be seen and be supported when the situation arrives. Meanwhile, United Nations Secretary General has beefed up the envoy in Sudan. 
Nicholas Haysom, Special Representative for Somalia and former Special Envoy for Sudan and South Sudan, is now part of the team looking at the situation in Sudan. Lehana Tsotizi, SABC News.